Denver 7 Now is sponsored by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Shannon Ogden with the latest from Denver 7. RTD operators have hit their limit. Now, they deal with unruly passengers every day. They are regularly working six days a week. and not enough of them to go around. They are under so much stress now, RTD is considering temporarily cutting some routes to give them a break. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn has that story. RTD driver Sean Manning feels the pain of his colleagues. Well, the youngest drivers get the worst runs. And he says because of that, good drivers often quit. On the other hand, we lose a lot of drivers in that first six to eight months. An internal RTD staffing memo suggests many bus and light rail operators have been required to work six days a week. Among bus drivers, the memo says 69% of drivers on average are essentially mandated or forced to work an extra day. Day. Drivers also say these OT mandates are nothing new. They've existed for years. But RTD is finally saying enough is enough because of morale issues and fatigue. This is a tough situation, but it's our reality. Spokeswoman Paulita Tonilas says RTD now has no choice but to cut some light rail and busing services. RTD believes that will eliminate the need for about 60 additional rail and bus drivers and could stop the OT mandates. It has now gotten to a critical stage where it is drastically impacting our ability to deliver service. The cuts to service could come as soon as November and should reduce the number of these daily alerts about disruptions in service. I just missed the train to get down here and then it took like almost an hour. While drivers make about $20 an hour, RTD says it has struggled to hire and retain drivers because of low unemployment graveyard shifts, and unruly passengers. The traveling public sometimes makes it a very tough job. For Manning, the extra pay every week makes the mandated OT worth it, so he volunteers as much as possible. It's better just to volunteer and choose the run you like. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. The city of Thornton will pay out more than a million dollars to the family of a man they killed. That man was going through a mental health crisis when an officer shot him in 2013. Jaime Ceballos was clearly unhinged from the moment police arrived to find him pacing the driveway with a baseball bat. His widow maintains that should have been enough for somebody to call in someone with crisis training. Well, they did not. Instead, approaching him and shooting him within one minute of arriving on the scene. And despite fighting the case in court until the eventual settlement, Thornton's police chief called the case tragic and said his department is committed to self-evaluation. Patrick Frazee's attorneys want to keep the media as much in the dark as possible when he stands trial for the murder of Kelsey Barrett. And that was a big takeaway, really, from today's final hearing before jury selection later this month. The defense does not want prosecutors talking to the press during trial. They also don't want the media live tweeting during the trial. Already, cameras are banned from trial. Well, a horrible sight at the Colorado National Monument today where a man appears to have driven off a cliff and he was found dead at the bottom. Deputies and Park Service now are investigating, and because a special crane is needed to remove that car, that wreckage could remain right where it is for months. Mm. It is an understatement to say an effort to recall State Senate President Leroy Garcia failed. Organizers needed to submit 13,000 signatures to get on the ballot. They turned in four signatures. And while Garcia and some other high-profile Colorado Dems will keep their jobs, some small-town leaders are struggling to stay in office. Especially true in Elizabeth, where a group opposed to growth is trying to kick out the mayor and the entire board of trustees. Those leaders tell our Megan Lopez they are not going down without a fight. There's an old town type of charm to Elizabeth, a place where the main street looks like it's from another era. But less than a mile away, change. New housing, new development that are not totally welcome here. A number of citizens over the last number of months have become um, a little bit alarmed by the growth rates. So recently, residents started circulating a petition to recall not only the mayor, but the entire board of trustees. I um, like to, you know, keep the, the town historically how it is. At know. a hearing Friday. The density of the houses that's being built. We would like to keep it lower. Petitioners laid out their reasons for the recall. We want to ensure that there are town ordinances in place to um, grow the community at a rate 
that is, uh, we believe is more supportable. While the mayor and board questioned the validity of it. I believe that the recall should be overturned. Mayor Megan Vasquez says recalls are expensive. So we could be spending close to $20,000 in the next six months on two elections. And many members are coming up for elections soon anyway or are term limited, so people should just vote. To me, recalling, especially in a small town like this, is not the answer because what it has actually done to our town is to our, the character of Elizabeth apart. The catch is that many of the people who are angry can't vote because they don't live in Elizabeth. There are people that live in Douglas County and the plan does in fact um, impact them. From traffic to water rights, so outside forces are playing a role in this tiny town's politics. We're not no growth, we're just um, controlled growth. Mayor Vasquez says so are state politics, since recalls have become a common theme in Colorado. I would rather see them attend a meeting, make a public comment, talk to the board. We're citizens, we, we have a voice, we want our voice to be heard, and right now we don't feel that our voice is being heard. Whether this recall goes through or not, both sides say they love Elizabeth and both are just trying to protect it. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And from your first alert weather center, take a look at your forecast now. An absolute picture perfect Saturday. That's how you want to start the weekend. On Sunday, it cools down a little bit. Uh, mountain may see some snow. We might get some rain down here and the wind picks up. And after that, our next chance of precipitation looks like it's coming in Thursday with a rain snow mix. This has been your Denver 7 on demand update. Thank you for joining us. Check back later. We'll have another one for you. And download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. I'm Shannon Ogden.